We received a complaint recently. One customer said he had followed our video tutorials to set up the 24 port long range PoE switch, but it's not working. This is his setup scenario. He placed the 24 port long range PoE switch in his house where it has the internet access and put a CAT6 Ethernet cable from his house to the bound. There's about 300 meters between these two locations. He knew he needed to place the PoE standard to the end of the cable before he connect it to the second PoE switch in the bound. He have done that. But there's just no network connection from the bound. What could be the issues? Now let's stimulate this setup and find the issue and the fix for this case. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. You will receive the notification once we release the new video. This is the setup scenario. We have the 24 ports long range PoE switch. This port label in green has the long range chipset built in. It can push the Ethernet data up to 300 meters. And this long range PoE switch is attached to this modem to have the Internet access. Here we got a 300 meter Ethernet cable. We are told it's better to show the real cable. Okay, now this, let's check the meters. This is the beginning of the cable. We see the 001 meters, the first meter. This is the end of the cable. We saw the 301, 305 meters. All right, let's connect the cable to one of the long range PoE ports. And let's move to the bound, which is about 300 meters. As we mentioned, we do need to work with the PoE standard to repeat the PoE network. Okay, we connect this cable to the input port of the PoE standard. But the strangest thing is both indicators are off, just like the client mentions. There's no power and the data go into this PoE standard. Let's connect the output port to our second PoE switch. There's no indicator on or the indicator are off, which means there's no internet access from the spawn to the house. What is the problem? The problem is the power hand shaking. In the standard PoE, there's power hand shaking. Before that long range PoE switch send the power or inject the power to this cable, it needs to make sure this PoE device requires the PoE. This is the PoE switch, but it doesn't need the power, right? So this PoE, PoE switch will not provide the correct feedback to the long range PoE switch. So the long range PoE switch will think this is not the standard PoE equipment. The long range PoE switch will not inject the PoE power to this cable. Eventually, this PoE standard will got no power. Even this PoE ports doesn't require the power, this PoE standard still need the power. Without the power, it cannot establish the usual long run network with the long range PoE switch. So what is the fix? We can add one device. This is a PoE splitter. We can put this device to the end of this cable and connect this device to this PoE splitter. We can see all the indicators are on. At this moment, this PoE standard getting the PoE power from the long range PoE switch. And the PoE splitter will separate the PoE power from the data. Also, stop the power since we don't need the power for this port, right? We still need one more cable to connect the output port to our PoE switch. We are seeing the indicators on, which means the switch in the barn has an internet connection to the switch in the house. Since we are here, I think it's better to run a speed test to verify the speed between these two locations. I have added the PC server in the house attach this PC server to our 24 port to long range PoE switch. This is the 300 meter KFI Ethernet cable. We still have the PoE standard in the bound and the PoE splitter and the second PoE switch. This is the new computer, it's attached to this PoE switch. 
Now let's take a look at the server. The server is running this software, Open Speed Tester Server. This is the IP address of this server. Now let's move to the bound. Let's refresh the link. This is the IP address of the server. Let's hit start. Now we are seeing about 100 megabits per second speed. The, the client is testing the download speed. After it completes the download speed test, it will start testing the upload speed. We are seeing about the same speed for uploading. So between these loca two locations, we have the about 100 megabit per second speed. I would like to put some challenge in this test. Now we are having 300 meter KFI Ethernet cable. What if we increase the length of the cable to 500 meters? This is the second row of the KFI Ethernet cable is 200 meters. I'm going to use this copper to chain these two cables together to get 500 meters. First, let's remove the cable from this PoE standard. And use a copper to put these two cables together. And we got another end from this new KFI Ethernet cable and connect it to our PoE extender. The indicators on means to, hold on, just drop. Let me do it again. Let's try to refresh the link and hit the star. We are seeing about the same speed. It also 100 megabits per second download speed. Let's wait for a while for the upload speed test. It's about almost about the same speed. So even we increase the length to 500 meters, the bandwidth between these two locations is still 100 megabit per second. So what is the limit? I can tell you the limit is 800 meters. But if we just keep increasing the length, the bandwidth will drop down to 10 megabits per second. I know the 10 megabit per second speed is too low, but it's still valid for some applications such as IP cameras. We not only can provide the data up to 800 meters, but the PoE for an IP cameras. In other applications such as the IoT device, which will consume very low bandwidth, it still works. All right, that's all for today's video. If you have any question, please post your message in the comment section below.